The genius of the people running Pepsi was shown these last days when we all found out that the solution to the world's problems is your average can of Pepsi. It's amazing, but you know what? Pepsi has been around for a long time, and there's a lot about them that you may not know. Here's 15 facts about the world's favorite revolutionary soft drink, including other marketing fails. Number 15. Earth First sold by Caleb Bradham in 1893, it was simply called Brad's Drink. Five years later, it changed its name to Pepsi Cola. Pepsi comes from the word dyspepsia, which means indigestion, and cola because it contained cola nuts, the ingredient that gives cola drinks their distinctive taste. After adding vanilla and sugar, it becomes a caffeine-rich drink and was marketed as the perfect energy boost during the day. Number 14. The amount of sugar you probably know that it has a lot of sugar. To be precise, 8 teaspoons of sugar in a standard can. Number 13. It almost disappeared. In 1931, in the middle of the Great Depression, the Pepsi Cola Company went bankrupt. Sugar prices were crazy after World War I and Pepsi lost a lot of money because of it. Charles Guth, the president of Loft Inc., a candy manufacturer, bought the Pepsi Cola Company and revived it as an act of defiance against the Coca-Cola Company. Charles Guth was angry that Coca-Cola didn't give him a special discount on their syrup, so Guth bought Pepsi, reformulated its syrup, and went after Coca-Cola. Number 12. Coca-Cola could have bought Pepsi The two cola giants could have been one. Between 1922 and 1933, Coca-Cola was given the chance to buy Pepsi on three separate occasions. Now, we don't know why Coke didn't take the chance. Perhaps it didn't see a big rival in Pepsi. Perhaps they decided to focus on their own brand instead. I bet they feel sorry now. Number 11. They helped the civil rights movement in the 1940s, the US was deeply segregated, and Pepsi decided to profit off of it. In a time when the Coca-Cola company refused to hire black people, Pepsi went for the so-called Negro market share and marketed their drink towards African Americans. Back then, white business owners kept a distance from anything involving African Americans, but Pepsi refused to use old racial stereotypes like Aunt Jemima's and Uncle Ben and instead put black Americans in a positive light as middle-class citizens that, at least as consumers, were seen as equals. Racism was still very strong in both companies, but because Pepsi did everything it could to sell more soda, as a result, during the 1950s, Pepsi had a market share three times bigger than Coca-Cola. Pepsi felt how it was to be on the receiving end of racism, and they even received death threats from the KKK. But the move proved to be highly profitable, and it proved that African Americans can be more than racial stereotypes, even if Pepsi only did it for the profit. Number 10. Pepsi and Frito-Lays Your favorite soda might be from the same company as your favorite chips. In 1965, the Pepsi-Cola company merged with Frito-Lay, thus becoming PepsiCo. So now Pepsi owns Doritos, Lays, and Cheetos. Pepsi also bought Mountain Dew and Tropicana in 1998, and in 2001 they also bought Giant Quaker Oats, becoming the owner of Gatorade as well. Number 9. Pepsi vs. Pexi In July 2009, Pepsi started marketing itself as Pexi in Argentina. Why? Well, because its name was mispronounced by 25% of the population. So instead of correcting people, they just went along with it. Number 8. The places that prefer Pepsi over Coke In general, Coca-Cola tends to outsell Pepsi, except a few places. Pepsi is favorite in Oman, India, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Dominican Republic, Guatemala, and Canada. Oh, Canada! <laughs> Number 7. Pepsi was the first American product sold in the Soviet Union. In Soviet Russia, nothing was more valuable than a pair of blue jeans or a bottle of American soda or American cigarettes. But it was almost impossible to sell anything that wasn't Soviet-produced. Richard Nixon, or so the story goes, was friends with a Pepsi executive and convinced Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev to taste the product. So later, in 1972, PepsiCo actually made a deal with the Soviet government. They could sell Pepsi in the Soviet Union, but had to export Stolichnaya Vodka to the US. Number 6. Pepsi made a lot of marketing mistakes Kendall Jenner's revolution-ending commercial isn't the only mistake Pepsi marketers did. Pepsi's slogan was, at one time, Pepsi brings you back to life. Perfect for a caffeine drink and perfect for the North American market, but then they went to China. And of course, there were some problems with the translation. So the slogan became, Pepsi brings your ancestors back from the grave, which is a little too much to ask from a soda. In 2011, during New York's Fashion Week, Pepsi unveiled their new Diet Pepsi Slim Can. The skinny soda didn't get the attention it needed. Instead, people accused Pepsi of glorifying unrealistic standards and eating disorders. 
Pepsi soon apologized. In 2013, Pepsi's branch from Sweden tried to be a little funny on the eve of the World Soccer Cup and made a Cristiano Ronaldo voodoo doll, complete with needles and everything. The joke didn't go so well. Pepsi had to apologize to Ronaldo for trying to black magic him. Number 5. Pepsi first sold in Israel in 1991 Pepsi did not sell soft drinks in Israel until 1991. It was really popular in the Arab world and many Jewish communities did not like that very much. Pepsi said that economic rather than political reasons kept it out of Israel. Number 4. Pepsi has a lot of variations, and I mean a lot of different flavors. Some of the craziest include Pepsi Max Mojito, Mojito flavor available in Denmark, Pepsi Max Chill, flavored with apple, Pepsi Latte, sold in Thailand, Pepsi Salty Watermelon, exactly what you heard, sold in Japan, Pepsi White, yogurt flavored, sold in 2008, also Japan, Pepsi Ice Cucumber, yep, Japan, summer 2007, Pepsi Gold, which is of course gold colored, and Azuki Sweet Bean Pepsi from, yes, you guessed it, Japan. Number 3. Pepsi was the first soft drink to use 2 liter bottles. In the 1970s, Nathaniel Wyatt invented a bottle made of some kind of complicated plastic, which was lighter than glass wouldn't shatter if dropped, and wouldn't contaminate its contents. In 1976, Pepsi was the first to sell its soda in big 2-liter bottles. Number 2. Pepsi was the first product to be advertised with skywriting. In 1932, Pepsi hired pilot Andy Stinnis to write their name over various cities in the United States, being the first product to be advertised this way. Over the next decade, they wrote approximately 2200 messages over the American continent. Number 1. The company has a lot of patents. PepsiCo does have a lot of patents, mostly related to soda and soda containers, but also a few that seem out of place. In the mid-1970s, PepsiCo patented a tennis racket. A synthetic resin replaced wood and nylon. The frame is described as consisting of two interlocking channel-shaped pieces with aligning holes for the strings. Why? I have no damn clue. And with that, we finish this tribute to our capitalist overlords. May the joy of PepsiCola be with you.